Trent Arthurlo, John LeMessurier, and Clive Dunn in Dad's Army. <laughs> Episode 3, Command Decision, featuring John Laurie and James Beck, with this week's guest, Jeffrey Lumsden. <laughs> Here is the latest news, and this is John Snag reading it. With Hitler's panzer divisions pushing the Allied armies ever closer towards the beaches on the northern coast of France, the skies over southern England are filled with the screech and whine of diving fighter planes locked in mortal combat. But let us not forget those gallant citizens on the ground, who, returning home after a hard day's work, go straight out again to parade as local defence volunteers. At the church hall in Walmington-on-Sea, members of the local platoon assemble for the evening parade. Hey! Hey, Jones, eh? are they here yet? Hello, Mr. Fraser. I want to hear yet. <laughs> the rifles! But what do you think? All we get is promises. Oh, see, we're becoming a laughing stoke, man, marching about with old knives and forks tied onto bits of stick. <laughs> Guard kids run off with just now shouting, Can I borrow your toasting fork, mister? <laughs> I know, I know. Do you know, one of them offered to lend me his cat pistol. <laughs> I, hope, I hope he sent a bucket. No, I took it. <laughs> Oh, good evening, Mr. Manrin. Evening, Mr. Wilson. Evening, Jones. Evening, Jones. Any news of the rifles, Mr. Manrin? No, but it's only a question of time, Jones. I've sent another letter to GHQ, couched in the strongest terms. They're bound to accede to a request from frontline troops like ourselves. Very good, sir. Are the men ready for parade? Yes, sir. Right, better carry on then, Wilson. I say, yes. All right, everybody. Would you mind falling in, please? All right. Go out. Go out. Attention. I'm sorry, Mr. Wilson. Yeah, well, you'd better try that again, Jonesy, I think. Yes, sir. I'll get the hang of it in a minute. All right. <laughs> right, stand at ease. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry. All right, go on. Attention! <laughs> Jones. Yes, Mr. Wilson. Do try and keep up with the others. Yes, sir. Very good, Mr. Wilson. All right, squad, stand at ease. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, Mr. Wilson. All right, once again. Squad, attention. Yes? No, Jones. <laughs> Mannering, I, I think it would save time if we settled for that. Yes. Go on to the next bit. Oh, yes, uh, Right, uh, squad, president, correct, sir. And ready for your inspection. Thank you, Sergeant. All right. Hey, will we be having the rifles soon? Very soon, I hope, Fraser. Thank God for that. Wilson, come here a minute. Yes, sir? I detect an undercurrent of dissatisfaction from the men. Well, yes, you see, it's probably because they haven't got any rifles. They don't really feel like, uh, you know, proper soldiers. Oh, I understand that. Mm. I'll have a word with them, boost their flagging spirit. Right. Now, listen, men, I know that you're worried about the rifles. Not easy being a frontline fighting force, <laughs> armed only with picks and staves. But rest assured, I shall not cease from mental strife until those rifles are in your hands. <laughs> I promise you, you will have them before the week is out. Oh, Mr. Manrin, what would we do without you? You're our inspiration, sir. Oh, come now, Jones. One just tries to do one's best. <laughs> come in. Ah, Wilson. Yes, sir? Any news from GHQ? No, oh, not a thing, sir, no. I, I think you were a little hasty last night, sir, when you promised the men you would get them rifles before the week was out. I had to say something. Must keep their morale up somehow. Mm. Yes? There's a Colonel Square to see you, Mr. Mannering. Colonel Square? Did he say what he wants? He just said he must see you on a most urgent military matter. Ah, Wilson. He must be from GHQ with news of our rifles. Send him in straight away. Do you really think he's come about the rifles? Oh, yes, yes. Now you can see how important it is, Wilson, to have a commanding officer like me who carries some weight for the top brass. Well, no one would dispute that you uh, carry weight, sir. <laughs> What do you mean by that? Well, especially with the men. Yes, exactly. A promise is a promise, and I never break my word. Ah, I'm Colonel Square. You must be main wearing. Oh, how do you do, Colonel? Actually, it's pronounced Mannering. Then why the hell do you spell it main wearing? A lot of nonsense. <clears throat> Sit down, Colonel. Ah, thank you, thank you. Now, what exactly is the situation? Well, I'll come straight to the point. <clears throat> the War House hadn't found a job for me yet. Though heaven knows it shouldn't be difficult for the man of my experience. Four years in the desert fighting Johnny Turk, you know. 1915 to 1918. You've heard of Elorance? 
I beg your pardon? <laughs> Ella Ross, man, Ella Ross. Now, what you see in your mind's eye when I say that word, Ella Ross? <laughs> I really don't know. <laughs> mean anything to you, Wilson? Well, uh, he's, uh, he's not the chiropodist, you know. <laughs> he used to have the shop in the high street, didn't he? No, you fool. I'm talking about Lawrence of Arabia. I served with him. That's what the Arabs used to call him. Sometimes they called him Pasha. That means great chief, you know. They used to call me Pasha as well. He was known as Lawrence Pasha. I was known as... Square Pasha. Well, sir. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. Just, just, just slipped out. Well, now, when do you want me to take over? Take over? Yes, take over the platoon man. Oh, I, I realize it's a bit of a blow to you. There's a lot of you chaps about want to be generals overnight, mean well, but you know damn all about soldiering. And war is a serious professional business. And this situation needs professionals trained in guerrilla warfare, like me. So if I can join your lot, I've got to take over. Well, I'm afraid there's no establishment for another officer in the platoon. I am the captain. Wilson here's the sergeant. Might be able to fit you in as a corporal. <laughs> corporal? Are you mad? Either I'm in full charge or I don't join at all. I'm sure another platoon would welcome me with open arms to say nothing of my rifles. I'm very sorry, there's just no... No rifles? <laughs> That's what I said, rifles. I've got about 20 of them. 20? Do you hear that, Wilson? They're not brand new, of course, but they're in top hole condition. Well, Mainwaring, don't you want them? Oh, yes, of course we do. <laughs> so do the Eastgate platoon. <laughs> well, the choice is yours. Do I take over full command, or do I take my rifles elsewhere? I'll give you two days to make up your mind. When you do, phone me. Here's my card. Thank you. I'll soon start making soldiers of you, but don't take too long to decide. We've got a lot of work to do. Thank you. Damned impertinence. <laughs> do you ever hear anything like that? No, sir. It makes it very difficult. What do you mean, difficult? Well, for you, sir. I mean, it's a terrible decision to have to take. I don't see where the decision comes in. We don't want old fools like that in command. Yeah, well, he, he, he has commanded guerrillas. Oh, in 1917, maybe. What does he know about modern warfare? Yes, well, of course. What do any of us know? <laughs> Are you suggesting that I should stand down? No, 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 I wouldn't suggest that, sir. Not at all, no, sir, no. No, certainly not. Good. It would have to be entirely your own decision. <laughs> commanding our sort of unit isn't like commanding Adams in the desert. These men are British. Have to be led, not bullied. Have to have the right personality. Oh, I do agree on that point, sir, absolutely, yes. The thing is, which is the most important weapon, to you? Your personality or his rifles? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I see. Well, he's given us two days to decide. We've got to get some rifles from somewhere. Yes, sir. If by tomorrow night there's no reaction from GHQ to my letter, there's only one course open to me. You mean you stand down, sir? No, phone them direct. Oh. <laughs> Hello there, Jones. Hello, Mr. Fraser. Still no rifles, I No, sir. not yet. Yeah, this rate will probably get them in time to fire the victory salute. What's Manorick doing about it? Nothing, I suppose. Well, he's doing his best, Mr. Fraser. It's not easy, you know. If he asked me, we'd be better off with Colonel Square. Shh, don't say that, Mr. Fraser. At least he's got rifles. Who's got rifles? Oh, hello, Walker. We were just talking about Colonel Square. The old blimey, yeah. We don't want him taking over the platoon, do we? As a matter of fact, I was going in to see Manorin. I might be able to fix him up with some rifles. Really, Joe? Yeah. <clears throat> Mind you, it'll cost him. Well, you better hurry up, then. <laughs> he's in the office phoning GHQ now. Hello? Hello. Uh, it's a very bad line, this, Wilson. Is it, sir? Uh, yeah, hello. Yes. Look, I can't emphasize too strongly the urgency of the situation. What? Yes, yes, I'll hold on. Evening, Mr. Mannering. Oh, hello, Walker. What is it? Yeah, well, I've just been on a blower to a geezer in the smoke. I can get some rifles for you, sir. <laughs> Many as you want, in fact. Eighteen quid a ton. I'm afraid that's out of the question, Walter. Where do they come from? Ah, we well, don't ask, do you? But uh, this geezer's a very good friend of mine. He's very discreet and reliable. I'm sorry, Walter. He's got a Lewis gun for 100 quid. 100 quid? <laughs> Sounds rather a lot. Yeah, well, I told him he was opening his mouth a bit wide, but he won't shift. But I look at it this way. There's a vault full of oncers in your bank, Mr. Mannering. And who's going to count it except you and Mr. Wilson? <laughs> Walter, your proposition is quite outrageous. Kindly of rejoin the platoon. Right, sorry, sir. Uh, no offence. Here, listen. Do you fancy some Mills bombs? Pound each, deadly. No! 
<laughs> what? What? Yes, I'm still holding on. Yeah, ah, good afternoon, sir. About this rifle situation. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I understand that, sir. But can't you let me have even half a dozen? There's division upon division of trained, ruthless men just across the water. And all I've got is carving knives and pitchforks. <laughs> yes. Yes. I see. All right, sir. Goodbye. Well, Wilson, there's no luck, I'm afraid. Oh, dear. You shall just have to be patient. Mm. Excuse me, Mr. Manry. Yes, Jones. The men are parading ready for your lecture, sir. Right, thank you, Jones. We're coming. Very good, sir. <coughs> After you, sir. Thank you, Wilson. Excuse me, Mr. Manry. Yes, Fraser, what is it? Are we going to get the rifles? Don't worry, Fraser. Everything is in hand. A squad. Stand at ease. <laughs> now, pay attention. On the command, move. The platoon will gather round the platform for a further lecture on unarmed combat. Yeah, that's just about our mark, unarmed combat. That'll do, Fraser. <laughs> move! Permission to speak, sir? Yes, Jones. I should like to volunteer to be the attacker, sir. But you were the attacker last time. I know, sir, but we've got to do something, seeing as we ain't got no rifles. Oh, all right, Jones. Now, you may remember last time we were dealing with the countermeasures to be taken when assaulted by a man with a dagger. Yes, sir, it was like this. Wow. All right, Jones, Jones, get full of it, Jones. <laughs> In view of the previous unfortunate accident, I don't think we'll use your knife. <laughs> Oh, very well, sir. How is your hand, by the way? <laughs> Healing quite nicely, thank you, sir. Good. Tonight, we'll use this ruler instead. Here you are. Thank you, sir. Now, having taken the blow on the left forearm, <laughs> you recall the next move is to twist your right hand like so and grab hold of the assailant's wrist. Is that right, Wilson? Yes, sir, yes. That's as far as we got before the doctor arrived. Right. <laughs> now, the next step is to knock out the opponent. This you could do with the flat of the hand to the throat, like so. Ah! <laughs> Didn't hurt you, did I, Jones? Go. <laughs> Go, so you carry on, sir. Now, the knee goes in the groin. Oh! <laughs> and two fingers are jabbed into the eye. <laughs> Steady, Jones. Oh. Hey, Mr. Marling. Yes, Fraser? This uh, jabbing in the eyes. What do you do if the opponent's wearing glasses? <laughs> That's a good question, Fraser. <laughs> now, the Whitehall chaps who wrote this manual thought of this, and they came up with a very smart alternative. They recommend that you shove your index and second finger right up his nose. <laughs> <laughs> Not a pleasant business, but this is war. Uh -huh. <laughs> what happens if he's wearing his gas mask? <laughs> Now, that's a very good question, isn't it, Wilson? Oh, yes, it is. Uh, very good indeed. <laughs> what happens if he's wearing his service respirator, you mean, Fraser? I see. must get in the habit of giving these things their correct names. Service respirator. Uh, is there anything in the manual, Wilson? No, it's me, sir. Let's have a look. Uh, see now. No, no, no. Not in this one, sir. Well, there you are. Fraser's brought up a very good point, which even the chaps in Whitehall haven't considered. <laughs> Still, they're not frontline fighting troops like us, are they? Oh, no. <laughs> so, what do we do if he's wearing a service respirator? Uh, eh? That's what I said. I'll tell you what we do. We improvise. Tommy Atkins is known all the world over for his perky, sparrow-like sense of humor and his ability to adapt himself to any situation. Jones, put on your gas mask. Service respirator. <laughs> Quite right, Wilson. I forgot. I'm subject to human frailties and weaknesses just like anyone else, you oh, know. Of course. Now, come on, Jones. You should have your respirator out by now. Sir? It's supposed to be at instant readiness. Yes, thank you, sir. Shall be a minute, sir. Do you mind holding this for me? What on earth is this? Well, it's just the pieces for Mrs. Foster's cat. <laughs> she helps me count the coupons, the meat coupons, and so I see her cat all right, you see. <laughs> That respirator is intended for use in a gas attack, Jones. Not a portable meat safe. <laughs> Sorry about that, sir. Well, never mind. Put it on. Yes, sir. Right, sir. Right, sir. Not the meat. The... the, the... <laughs> right, sir. I've got it on now, sir. Now, as you can see, with the respirator on, it's no good trying to put our fingers in his eyes or up his nose. So what are we to do? Who's got a suggestion? I have. 
Yes, Walker? Breathe on his windows. <laughs> Breathe on his windows. Oh, that's an interesting suggestion. <clears throat> Try it. <laughs> Doesn't seem to work very well. Well, you blew, sir. You should have hoffed. Come <laughs> on. Hoffed. Hoffed. Perhaps you'd like to try a hoth on them. Oh, yes, I'd love to. Yes. Hoth. Hoth. <laughs> it's a celluloid material, I think, so it doesn't seem to steam up. It's steamed up inside here, all right. Well, perhaps that's the answer, then. Hold him there till he gets steamed up. Yes, it's a possibility, I suppose. I have it. Cut off its air supply. Grab the air tube and close it like so. Now, you know as well as I do that the biggest, toughest chap in the world, be it Nazi Stormtrooper, the SS, or just plain Fritz, can't last for more than a few seconds without air. <laughs> Jones, uh, Jones has fainted. Quick, get his gas mask off. Service respiration. Oh, never mind that. Get it off. <laughs> Jones, uh, there, there we are. That's it. Tax. The man's got no stomach now. Come on, Wilson. Let's get Jones into my office. The rest of you carry on with the exercise. Omitting, of course, the obstruction of the air pipe. You ready, Wilson? Yes, sir. Right. Get him up. All right, sir. Right. Come here. Oh, Easy now. Come on. Let's stand down a bit. Straighten up. That's it. That's Mind the door. Yes, sir. Come on, Wilson. Easy for you, sir. I, I've got the heavy end. Lift him on. Lift him onto the couch. Yeah, right. On the couch. Oh, oh I uh, Where am I? Where am I? He's coming too, sir. Close the door, Wilson. Right, sir. Yes. Oh. It's you, Mr. Mannering. There, there, Jones. You're all right now. Oh. You're feeling better? Oh, dear, sir. I, I'm sorry I was overcome, sir. Well, it wasn't your fault, Jones. You yeah. couldn't breathe. No, I know, Mr. Wilson, but I wouldn't have snuffed out like that normally. It's just that my morale is all shattered. <laughs> I tried to hide it from the men, but it's no use. I mean, sir, what can you do with a shattered morale? My dear fellow, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I feel terribly responsible. No, no, sir, it's not you, sir. You see, every morning I open up my shop and all these women come in and they try to get a bit on the side. <laughs> well, I'd like to oblige them, sir, but I can't. What can I say to them? I'm used to joints, Mr. Manning. Topside, sirloin, wing ribs, spare ribs, legs of mutton, legs of pork, every size and description. You name it, I've sliced oh, you, it. You mustn't get overexcited. <laughs> yeah, I know, sir, I know, sir. But you see, nowadays, instead of joints, I've got to give them particularly... A one and tenpenny piece. You've got no idea the precision of it. A slight shake of the hand, slap it on a scale, four minutes light, and it's all hell let loose. <laughs> well, we all have to put up with these things. Yes, yes, you mustn't forget there's a war on. Yes, well, I've sitting in my shop all day with only two rabbits and a tin of corned beef in the window. <laughs> and if that isn't bad enough, when I've finished work and I've had my tea, I take out my assegai and sharpen it, and I come down here for parade, hoping it'd be a rifle for me. And there never is. <laughs> there never is. Wilson, <clears throat> our first casualty. <laughs> I never thought Jones would go like that, did you? Yes, well, you can't really blame him, sir. It's only frustration. I know. Just wants to have a go at Jerry like the rest of us. Well, I'm afraid if you don't get some rifles soon, everyone's morale is going to drop to rock bottom. Well, we'll soon put a stop to that. I've made up my mind, Wilson. You can ring Colonel Square and tell him I accept his offer. He can take over the platoon. Do you think that's wise, sir? Don't argue, Wilson. Just do it. But are you sure you're making the right decision, sir? Just get on the phone, Wilson, and do as I say. Very well, sir. Oh, me wedding. There you are. Couldn't see you in the hall. Oh, Colonel Square. This your orderly room? Well, sort of. I, uh, I didn't recognize you in your flowing robes. It's a burnoose, ma'am. It's a burnoose. Oh. Wore these when I was with Elorance, you know. Really? <laughs> well, I'm glad you finally came to your senses and realized who was the better man to command the platoon. Yes, well, perhaps you'd like to come through and I'll introduce you to the men. Right. Somerset? Yes, sir. I'm just going to introduce Colonel Square to the men. Oh, very good, sir. All right, men. Uh, fall in, would you please? Now, pay attention, men. As from tonight... I should be placing this unit under the command of Colonel Square. No, 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 no. I'm doing this because he has not only the knowledge to form you into a fine fighting force, but he also has the rifles. And I know that you'll find in him an officer of rare distinction and quality. 
Colonel Scrum. Thank you, Mainwaring. Mainwaring. Call the men to attention. What's your name? Uh, 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 Wilson, sir. Well, go on, then. Go on. Oh, sir. Yes, of course, yes. Uh, please, uh, 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 squad. Ascension. I'm oh, sorry about that. Oh, come along, come along, Wilson. You're not addressing the Mother's Union. I'm terribly sorry, sir. Well, never mind, never mind. You better go and join Mainwaring. Right. You're a bit too mamby-pamby for me. Oh, very well, sir. I'll take over. Right. Now, listen to me, men. You've had it easy up to now. Look at you. Some of you look like sacks of sherbet tied up with string. <laughs> I'm going to turn you ragtag and bobtails into an aggressive gorilla force. Hey, Georgie. Who does he think he's talking to? He looks a bit too lally to me, Mr. Fraser. <laughs> Silence in the ranks! Now, what's the first thing you've got to learn when you're fighting the Turk? <laughs> the Hun. You. Who, me? Yes, what's your name? Uh, the, the Walker, sir. Well. I don't know. Well, think, man, think. For example, can you tell me why I'm dressed like this? <laughs> You're going on to a fancy dress ball. <laughs> no, you fool. It's camouflage, isn't it? Camouflage. Blend with your surroundings. Yeah, but if you were going to blend with these surroundings, you'd have to look like a piece of the floorboard, wouldn't you? Take his hand! Take his hand! Gun carriage at dawn, 20 lashes. Well, there, Wilson. He's back in the desert, meeting up 20 lashes. Yes, well, we must humour him, I suppose, sir. But, but we do need his rifles. Right. Now, you've got your camouflage. What next? Element of surprise. Fast mobile patrols. Strike from the hills and disappear into the night. Hey, Josie. Yeah? The man's unhinged. <laughs> <laughs> we had an officer like him in the Sudan. Mad Harry, they called him. <laughs> it's the sun, you know. It gets to them. Silence, you old fool. <laughs> Who, me? Yes, you. Oh, you can't talk to me like that. Silence, I said. What's your name? What's your name? Jones, sir. Jones, sir. <laughs> My hat, if you weren't so senile, I'd have you staked out in the sun for answering me back. He really is terribly rude, isn't he? <laughs> yes. Pay attention. Now, I've brought my rifles. They're in the shooting break outside. On the command, move. You will follow me into the yard, and I shall issue each of you with a rifle. Move! Come along, come along! Mr. Wandling, I beg your pardon, Mr. Wandling. What is it, Fraser? Well, sir, some of us think we stand more chance against Hitler with you and our pitchforks than with your loony. <laughs> Did you be locked up? I was again the idea of Colonel Square taking over from the very start, you know. Yes, thank you, Fraser. Very loyal of you. I'm only allowing you to go through all this because we must have those rifles. Here, Mr. Mannering. Yes, Walker. I think you'd better come and have a look at these rifles. What on earth are they? Six Arabian muzzle loaders by the look of them. <laughs> oh, no, man. They were obsolete 60 years ago. Arabian? Good heavens, a man's a maniac. We've been hoodwinked, Wilson. Hoodwinked. Yes, sir, it does rather look like it. Come on, Wilson. We'll send him and his rifles packing. This is war, not the desert song. <laughs> Mannering? Yes, come in. Uh, isn't it about time we started the parade, sir? I mean, the men are all here. Yes, I suppose we'd better. Tell me, Wilson, how do you judge the mood of the men after last night's little escapade? Oh, I think they're very relieved that you're still in command, sir. That's very gratifying. All the same. Yeah. I, I, I can't have feeling it was a pity you ever promised the men that have rifles before the end of the week. I mean, it, it was rather rash. A commander of the field must take decisions, rash or otherwise. That's what makes him a leader. <laughs> Captain Mannering here. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, I see. Yes. Thank you very much, sir. Was that news of the rifle, sir? No, I'm afraid not. It's just a message from GHQ to say that we are no longer local defence volunteers. In future, we will be known as the Home Guard. Well, that's good news, sir. Oh, yes. Yes, I'm sure it'll frighten the Germans to death. <laughs> to know that they no longer have a bunch of unarmed local defence volunteers to deal with. Instead, they've got to face an unarmed bunch of home guards. <laughs> Come in. Captain Mannering? Yes? I'm from GHQ. I've got 500 LDV armbands for you. <laughs> You're a bit late. I got here as soon as I could. We're home guard now. I don't know anything about that. Sign here, will you, sir? Oh, very well. 
And here, sir. Mm. And uh, here. There you are. Thank you. I'll just go and get them. I'll park the ten tonner outside. Won't be a jiffy. What a waste of petrol. Using a ten ton lorry to transport 500 arm bands. You realise that's 25 each for us. <laughs> <laughs> we'll look rather overdressed, won't we? Okay, if I leave the stuff by the door. Oh, yes. Right. There you are, then. Scruffy individual, that driver. Yes, he is, rather, yes. That is not in my platoon. <laughs> Good night, sir. Fancy sending us 500 LD. Wilson? Hmm? Do my eyes deceive me? Or has he left some rifles? What? Good Lord, sir, you're right. Yes, he has. Five rifles. At last, GHQ have come to their senses, Wilson. They always take note of someone with authority, you know. <laughs> Armed with these rifles, we are now a fighting force to be reckoned with. Yes, uh, sir. Right, Wilson. I'll take this one. You bring the others. Mm -hmm. Are you sure you can manage, sir? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Come on. I'll see the men and show them that their faith in their leader was not misplaced. After you, sir. Oh, look, look, Michael. Yes! Yeah, yeah, thank you, man. Aye, oh, well done, Captain. Tonight, as I promised you, we have received our first consignment of weapons. Five sparkling... Ross rifles. More will follow. And when Hitler kicks off, this town is going down in the annals of history as the place that stopped him. <laughs> so come on, Adolf. Do your damnedest. Yes, <laughs> That episode of Dad's Army from the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft, you heard Arthur Lowe as Captain Mannering, John LeMessurier, Sergeant Wilson, Clive Dunn, Corporal Jones, John Lorry, Private Fraser, James Beck, Private Walker, Geoffrey Lumsden, Colonel Square, and David Sinclair as the driver. Command decision was adapted for radio by Michael Knowles and Harold Snowd and produced by John Dias.